likely to screw it up. So, yes. Next, on to class inheritance. Now, for this example of class inheritance, let's assume you are making a game. And in that game, you'll have classes which are enemies. And you're going to have many different enemies. You're maybe going to have a soldier, maybe a airplane, I don't know. And they're all going to have to require a lot of duplicate code. They're all going to have to draw themselves to the screen. They're all going to have to maybe animate themselves to look like they're walking or something. They're all going to have an ammo attribute. And they're all going to have, an, I don't know, something else. But that's a lot of duplicate code to write, and duplicate code either means a lot of copy and pasting, or the possibility of rewriting something wrong. And also, let's say you find a better way to do something, say your animation, you have to change that in every single class. Now there's a better way, with class inheritance, you can define one class, and define the other classes to inherit from that class, and they will share all that common code. So let's just say, I have a class called enemy which is going to be our basic enemy and it's going to define the draw method which is going to be fairly I don't know the same so whatever your drawing code is we're going to have the class soldier which is going to inherit from enemy and it's going to define the shoot method since that might be unique to the soldier but let's say we have, uh, you know, we need to redefine the draw method. It's kind of weird for a certain enemy. We're going to have different enemy. So it's not like you're locked in to the stuff you have already defined. So we can redefine the draw. Just going to do special stuff. Very cool. And. If you have uh, an initialize method up here, def initialize, and you redefine that in a different place, say down here in the soldier, to get this initialize code to run, which you will probably need in both places, this is just a little bit different, use the super method, which calls the, you know, the inherited from classes initialize method. All right. Now, on to modules. Modules are like classes, except they can't be initialized and every method has to be prefixed with the self with the self dot. Now, that sounds like a huge limitation, but it can actually be useful though it is only in a few certain instances. First would be to keep your code separated, maybe I don't know. Maybe you have like an artificial intelligence module and maybe you have a graphics module or something those are two completely separate things that you might want to keep separated um, the second reason which is more important and more common is if you're developing code for other people to use your classes might have the same name as the code they are using so which could introduce some problems as they're redefining your classes because of open classes so you to find something and yeah so now let's say you want to create a module because I've been telling you so much about them uh, it's gonna be a module called data visualizer and, and we're gonna have a class that graphs stuff called grapher and I have a class that plots things called plotter and we're gonna have a method called data com and we're actually going to have that with a question mark because that looks nicer. Uh, whoops, I'm sorry. Um, and yeah, so to access that method you defined, you would just do data visualizer dot data compatible. You would pass your data to that. Oh, right, and that data needs method needs to have the data as the parameter. Alright, and that's how you do it like you would with class methods on a class. But to access the classes in that module, you have to use two colons. So, 
and that would be how we would instantiate the grapher with data visualizer colon colon grapher dot new. All right, that's actually pretty much it for uh, modules. I know not not a lot to learn. Pretty simple. So that brings us to the end of this episode. A very sad time. Please do not forget to donate. These videos actually are costing me a tad bit of money to make and put up online. Be wonderful if you could give me money so I could keep them there and keep making videos as well. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions about anything, I would love to hear from you. You have no idea how much. Please leave a comment on the page or email me at tyler at manwithcode.com. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.